Good evening, my name is Jamie Ladner and I'm a freshman in conservation biology. This summer I read the KSBN Common Read Ready Player One and I absolutely loved it. So when I came to K-State in the fall and found out there was a game based on this book, I was so excited. I call it a game, but it was more like a six week long adventure. It had everything anyone could want, puzzles, treasure hunts, and tons of other fun activities based on this book. Being new to campus, it was a great way to find out about the people and resources we have on campus. Ben Ward was a huge part in making this game happen. As an instructional designer, he brought the game to life. From recreating a talking computer to um, creating a multi-user dungeon in the stacks, he made this game something straight from a science fiction novel. Um, this game, I, this game so, gave me so many great memories and so many wonderful friends, I couldn't think of a better way to start off my college experience. One of the people I have to thank for this is Ben Ward. Thank you, Jamie. Make sure I'm here. Oh, there we are. Okay. I said as long as I can get past the first slide, I should be okay. Um, tonight, I'm going to tell you about a game. And along the way, I hope I can share with you some of the passion and enthusiasm I have for the promise and potential of teaching with games. So, without further ado, we started with the book, the KSBN, or the K-State Book Network's Common Read, Ready Player One by Ernest Cline, which KSBN graciously said we could build a game around. And from there, we took this wonderful book about a dystopian world in a hero's journey by the name of Parsifal, who went into a virtual world looking for an Easter egg that with the promises of finding this egg, he could actually change his life and potentially change the world in real space. And that is how we began our game. This is what our players affectionately call it, the game. And it really was a six week adventure involving many, many experiences. It was available to students, graduate students, faculty, staff, and it began at the very beginning of last semester. Now, we didn't just jump out and say, let's build a game because that would be fun. Really, there's been a lot of push and movement in education towards using games in teaching and learning. And this started back as early as the Horizon reports in 2011. In 2014, if anything, the push has been even greater. And what is there not to like? Games are engaging, they're motivating, they're great for teaching critical thinking, for problem solving, and if you don't watch yourselves, you might even rediscover that learning can in fact be fun. Now, the things that we did that I'm gonna show you tonight was a huge endeavor, and it involved a lot of people. It wasn't just myself. From K-State Libraries, we had Joel Pitts and Dan Ironton, and if it weren't for their creativity and their support in co-designing this game, this could have never have even happened at the, from the get-go. We've also added in Ellen Erton as of this winter, and uh, we'll get into more details about that later. Now, the kind of game we built is called classically an alternate reality game. And as Jane McGonagall talks about it in her book, Reality is Broken, alternate reality games are kind of a tricky little thing. They go on for days to weeks or even months at a time in which players going through both online experiences and real world events uncover a narrative. And these games, which frequently are referenced anymore as transmedia storytelling, become hugely complex things. Because it's just not games and puzzles and codes and riddles. It's way more than that. There's an underlying narrative that is slowly revealed to the players, both in online spaces and in real world events. And they become part of the telling. They get to contribute to the story. Now, whoop, I jumped way ahead of myself. I apologize for that. To give you an idea of the scope of our game here, um, this was a big game. We had 509 active participants. We had far beyond that who just even just signed up onto the scoreboard. Our hub of our game happened in a case state's lib guide known as Anorex Almanac, based straight out of the book in many ways. And we had over 10,000 hits to that site alone. 
There were over 500 posts to Tumblr and Twitter. We used graduate students and student workers and our own sweat and time to make that happen, to carry the story along. We had 197 game challenges, over 320 puzzles, riddles, and trivia pieces involved in this. We had 50 plus real world events, over 50 geocache sites. We had 20 challenges that led directly to student services. We had five sponsored surveys that covered everything from student services on into housing and dining. We had a Facebook page that our own players generated to both commemorate and keep together after the game. So it continues on to be used to this day. And one player who very industriously got so frustrated with some of our puzzles, they created a Reddit page to crowd solve, solving some of them. <laughs> what in the end we had were com countless opportunities for students and faculty and graduate students to get together, to make friends, to learn about the campus, and to have a lot of fun. Okay. Now, our top players, just a few little details to give you an idea about that. Uh, we had everything from architectural engineering on way to conservation biology. 50% of our players were women, which is 10% above the national average for games in general. And 45% of our core players were in fact freshmen, which was our target audience. Now on to the game itself. Let's kind of, kind of look a little under the hood. Some of you may have seen this egg. This one was hanging on the Beach Museum, one of our more ardent supporters, and I can't thank them enough. But this was the mark that let players know that the game was here. And my, like many transmedia storytelling events, if you didn't ask questions, if you weren't curious, you never actually fell down the rabbit hole into the game. But if you did, behind this little marker were many things that unfolded. And that is how our game was designated to our players. This here is our scoreboard. It was actually designed by students in a web interface design class uh, that was taught by uh, Dan Anderson and uh, Nathan Bean and implemented by Nathan. This is our uh, Anorex Almanac. There's tons of pages in here. It's just packed full of trivia because if you've read Ready Player One, it is just a treasure trove of books and movies and cultural references. To give you a quick example, here's a line that's directly from the book and it's also directly from a movie. And now I'm not supposed to ask you all, but I'm going to. Only the meat get pinched and the bold survive. Does anybody know what movie that came from? Yes, Ferris Bueller. <laughs> of course, Jamie got it. Now, some of them got more complex. You had to seriously get your geek on to, for some of them. We had treasure hunts. This was an homage to Goonies. Hey, you guys. We had our computer that was a simulation of the movie War Games with Matthew Broderick. We even had our parody of the games Zork that lived in the stacks of Hale Library. We even built card games to simulate the giant robot battle at the end of the book. But more importantly, our players played, and they had fun, and they were a diverse group of students from all over campus, from all sorts of majors. And they weren't just students. We had faculty members and graduate students stepping in with them. We had building challenges. In fact, this student here didn't want to play our game at all, but her roommates roped her into coming in because she was in architectural engineering and they wanted to win this challenge. <laughs> and they did. So, <laughs> to kind of give you a little bit more of an idea, these are some of the quotes that actually come, and I know we're not supposed to read from slides, but I'm going to anyway, because these aren't my words. As a freshman, it gave me a group of friends right off the bat. Being more connected to students made me more felt, felt, feel more connected to the school itself. Wake up, there we go. I think that I was mainly surprised more by the attitudes of the players. Everyone was competitive, but at the same time, a real sense of camaraderie developed as we helped each other we're out wherever possible instead of everyone being out for their own gain. I really enjoyed the puzzles, especially seeing the mystery eggs scattered around the campus. It felt like being party to a big secret that makes you feel special for understanding its purpose. And I also felt I, like I was a part of the community by participating. And that was part of our goal. Now this is part of the K-State Challenge course, which was part of our Hero's Journey Quest chain that was inspired by conversations with Greg Eisline. 
and was thankfully provided to us for the generosity of Travis Ritiker. And we had a lot of fun. Our students got to meet each other more closely and challenge each other and even push themselves to new limits. And then we enter into our end game where students actually had to start. The whole game was designed. You couldn't win this game. You couldn't get far along in this game without meeting people, without cooperating, without sharing. And that was part of the whole epitome of our design. Here we are with our last hurrah, or huzzah to be more exact, as the high top scores are actually reenacting portions of Monty Python's The Holy Grail, straight out of the book. I'm, I'm being serious here. And here is, of course, Jamie Ladner with Arthur Ernest Klein in their DeLorean, our grand winner, getting a chance to ride around in the car. Now, I have countless thanks, and I'm going to forget people all the way through here. I'm going to forget a lot, so please forgive me, and I'm way over time already. Um, but this couldn't have been done without a lot of support from administration and faculty. In particular, if K-State Libraries and ITAC hadn't been brave enough to even let us begin, this would have never have happened. And we particularly need to thank uh, the KSBN and K-State First for their generosity in sharing with the common read. Um, we also need to thank the Human, Union Programming Council, the Office of Student Life, the Office of Mediated Education, uh, Academic Student Services, the Writing Center, the Beach Museum, and it goes on and on, including the College of Agriculture, the College of Arts and Sciences, College of Human Ecology, and I know I'm forgetting people. In particular, we need to thank Tara Coleman for her efforts, and uh, Greg Eisline, and Karen Westman, and Nathan Bean, and Ben Hopper, and I know I'm forgetting, I told Brent Anders, who was here also, that I had to thank him because he actually helped us with a whole chunk of video in the game. Now, some of you may ask, well, I missed it. What can I do? Well, I got good news for you. We're going to go into a second generation of the game. We're also basing it on the common read, and it is coming up. We're going to be mapping the ghost map. If you're curious about contributing, shoot me an email. If you're more curious, just want to watch or even have an opportunity to play, Look for our mark. Thank you.